English, Espanol, Vano Sinigma. I just listened to an interview of James D'Angelo with uh, Epic Center Bitcoin. By the way, creator of Commons, so I posted that um, video. Bueno, acabo de escuchar un interview con James de Angelo y con Epic Center Bitcoin. Y también puesto eh, una parte, la, uh, the second part I put in the, in the first, at first, because it's very interesting about the problem of decentralization. He puesto una parte del video que es al final, lo he puesto al principio, eh, porque hay un tema de descentralización um, por la seguridad, because of security. Um, so James D'Angelo talked about how can we solve that problem um, of to improve decentralization. Uh, James D'Angelo ha hablado sobre el tema de cómo uh, mm, Cómo solucionar ese problema de la descentralización y um, but I think of a very different approach. Uh, yo pienso en una solución muy diferente. Um, first, I should explain uh, just uh, which is the problem of decentralization is because very few people mine Bitcoin. So it's uh, the control is in uh, very few hands and can it can be corrupted. Uh, antes debería eh, explicar brevemente el problema que consiste en la dis descentralización es porque hay muy poca gente que hacen el trabajo de minero, mi mine. Uh, Bitcoin. Uh, hay grandes fábricas en China uh, que sí, tienen muy poco co uh, control en, en, en pocas manos y puede ser corrupto. And mining, of course, uh, costs a lot of electricity. Y uh, uh, minar Bitcoin, por supuesto, cuesta un montón de electricidad. So as Ch Ch James D'Angelo, okay, let's talk about my uh, solution. I think we should um, focus much more on the topic of free energy because, um, bueno, yo creo que deberíamos uh, concentrarnos mucho más en el tema de cómo uh, producir energía uh, libre como Nicolás Tesla um, the invention of sorry invention of Nicolás Tesla was um, was suppressed because of um, cooperation interests Corporatocracy, not democracy. Bueno, ya sabéis que la Nikola Tesla era el pionero en el tema de energía libre y su invención ha sido suprimida por eh, intereses de las grandes empresas. So lately I've listened very much to videos of Jameson from Jamaica who focus very much on this topic of free energy. Hashtag get off the grid. Bueno, últimamente eh, me he concentrado mucho, eh, eh, perdón, he mirado muchos videos de Jameson from de Jamaica que concentra mucho Hola, eh, en el tema de energía libre, eh, otro hashtag es off the grid. And anyway, if we had something like free energy, we wouldn't need so much uh, money, Bitcoin, whatever, um, to to pay the electricity bills.
in the first place. And anyway, uh, sorry, Spanish. Y de todas formas, si tuviéramos algo como electricidad libre, de Nikola Tesla, eh, no necesitamos tanto dinero, Bitcoin o lo que sea, para pagar las facturas de electricidad. So, you know, I'm very active on Twitter, I like hashtags, and the hashtag decentralization I'll take much more serious now uh, because uh, it's very important for the security of Bitcoin. Bueno, ya sabéis que estoy muy activa en Twitter, me gustan los hashtags y el hashtag uh, decentralización, bueno, principalmente en inglés, en, en inglés por supuesto, decentralization. I'll put, I'll take much more serious now, uh, voy a ponerlo mucho más uh, alto arriba en la lista de prioridades porque es muy importante por la, por la seguridad de Bitcoin. So now later maybe I'll paste a part of that video of uh, James D. Angelo Epic Center Bitcoin. Ahora, más tarde, voy a pegar este, esta parte del vídeo de James de Antelo y Epicenter Bitcoin. And one of my next videos uh, will be about Bitcoin per minute, hashtag written together, hashtag Bitcoin per minute. Ahora, en el futuro, uno de mis próximos vídeos será sobre el tema de uh, Bitcoin por minuto. Uh, tengo en cuenta en español, arroba BPM, uh, VM, Bitcoin por minuto, video mix, abreviación de letras. And another uh, account in English um, called Bitcoin per minute. Um, at BPM 432. By the way, this 432 is inspired because I was very impressed about this uh, 432 hertz of music. And in relation to the topic of dis decentralization, uh, I have some more Twitter accounts like Sharing is Caring and Bitcoin Meetup. Uh, welcome, of course. Okay, this uh, a problem of decentralization might, might sound a little negative, uh, but I should mention something even more negative. Bueno, es el tema de problema de descentralización puede sonar un poco negativo, pero debería mencionar algo todavía más negativo. Y que, so lately I have heard very much about um, alchemy gold, so that um, the, the biggest secret of alchemy is that can uh, materials can be converted in uh, gold or whatever you want to uh, produce. So uh, we should uh, really focus much more in cryptocurrency and Bitcoin because uh, our state money uh, should be backed by gold, which anybody can be fake. So, bueno, a traducir. Bueno, últimamente he oído mucho sobre el tema de alquimia. El secreto más grande es que um, materiales pueden ser convertidos, especialmente el oro se puede producir. Así que por esta razón uh, deberíamos concentrar mucho más en uh, criptomonedas como Bitcoin, porque ¿qué nos vale el dinero del Estado? si sí está res respaldado por el puto <risa> oro que no, no, de todas formas no, <risa> imprimen mucho más dinero que
que hay eh, oro detrás del dinero. Anyway, they print much more uh, money than gold is back. That <laughs> anyway, this is <laughs> so uh, we must, in spite of this problem of decentralization, um, security, we we have to focus on cryptocurrency. Okay. Maybe we should take that a topic of free energy much more serious because this can help uh, the mining can be much be more much more easy if much more electricity is available. Así que concentrarnos mucho más en el tema de de energía libre porque así puede tenemos mucho más electricidad y así podemos minar Bitcoin. No solo una empresa grande en China. I'm not an expert in, in, in free energy. I just listened to uh, several videos, especially of um, Jameson from Jamaica. And yo no soy en un experto, una experta en uh, energía libre, solo he escuchado muchos videos de Jamson, Jamaica. Y and he explained that um, the uh, best way uh, to um, produce this free energy is among some neighbors, that some neighbors, uh, some blocks of houses, they put themselves together, of course, independently of the state, in small groups, they can pr produce this free energy and mine Bitcoin. Maybe this is, this is uh, maybe the, the, in my eyes, the biggest uh, motivation to create free energy and decentralize uh, the mining process. Bueno, uh, según uh, Jameson, uh, la manera uh, mejor para producir esta energía libre es um, que uh, unos vecinos se ponen juntos, uh, por supuesto independiente del Estado, y posiblemente la... Uh, mayor motivación en, en por mí sería para minar Bitcoin, para tener suficiente energía, electricidad para independientemente minar Bitcoin. And another hashtag which is similar to decentralization is hashtag P2P, which means peer to peer. Bueno, en español casi es. Un hashtag muy similar es P2P, que es abreviación por, um, bueno, es, no sé, creo que solo en inglés es peer-to-peer. -peer. Bueno, hashtag descentralización. Uh, you know that I focus very much on the hashtags and if you go in my last section of uh, YouTube so you see all my Twitter accounts and I like to explore different hashtags in these different Twitter accounts. Bueno, repito que ya mi última sección de YouTube ahí tengo la lista de todas mis cuentas en Twitter y me gusta mucho um, explorar los diferentes um, hashtags y uh, a través de estos diferentes Twitter account, uh, cuentas de Twitter, que me caigo en inglés. <laughs> Another important topic in relation with free energy, I think, is uh, magnetism. Otro tema importante en relación de energía libre es el tema del magnetismo. Remember um, North Pole and South Pole. Recuerda Polo Norte, Polo Sur. But in my opinion, if you have been following on um, my YouTube channel, 
I have produced many videos about this hashtag I invented let's talk FE pero el tema si sí, me ha seguido en mi canal de YouTube los últimos meses he creado un hashtag uh, let's talk FE para hablar sobre ese tema secreto de tierra plana flat earth and I just mentioned this um, North Pole and South Pole in my opinion there's just a one a magnetic center which is uh, we call North Pole magnetic center if you look at the map of uh, United Nations and but they don't depict Antarctica which is um, uh, the outer edge of that circle. Bueno, el Polo Norte, en mi opinión, es, eh, se llama el centro magnético. Si miras el mapa de ONU, eh, ves eh, el no Polo Norte en el medio y alrededor um, han dejado, no enseñan. Um, Antártida, que es el límite alrededor. You know that Admiral Byrd and Nazis and so on uh, made many expeditions to Antarctica. Ya sabes que Admiral Byrd hizo muchas expediciones a Antártida y um, Nazis y. y yeah, you know the um, Antarctic Treaty they prohibit people uh, at least to fly over Antarctica because um, they discovered something prohiben de volar sobre el entre comillas continente de Antarctica porque en ese tiempo 1900 56, 1956 about, they discovered something and maybe they uh, discovered uh, even something in relation to free energy and magnetism because this um, maybe we should um, uh, focus more on that magnetism. Um, I don't know why, it's just an opinion because these are uh, North and South Pole, uh, what we call it, it has very much to do with this magnetism. Tal vez deberíamos concentrarnos un poco más sobre ese tema de magnetismo en relación al tema energía libre. And um, talking about this free energy, um, you know that the uh, Antarctica, there are much more resources, energy resources, not just uh, the technology of uh, free energy, there are under the ground, are minerals, earth, many, many resources. Uh, aparte de la tecnología de energía libre en Antártida, hay muchos recursos minerales in Antarctica. This topic of energy is very, very, very important and is the key for decentralization, I think, of mining Bitcoin. Veo que ese tema de energía, energía libre, es muy importante y llave para solucionar este problema de descentralización y descentralización de Bitcoin para dar oportunidad a vecinos en grupos pequeños ponerse juntos y a minar Bitcoin. Especialmente interesante para Argentina, Sudamérica, que la, el dinero, inflación, inflación. 
In, the, in relation to that topic of magnetism, I want to mention shortly CERN, Switzerland, and NASA. Um, y en relación con el tema de magnetismo, quiero mencionar brevemente um, CERN, Suiza, y NASA. They have very much uh, tax money available to make many experiments. Um, uh, for example, to fake um, the um, lack of gravity of the astronauts, to fake being in space. Anyway, did you see the bubbles, uh, the air bubbles? Anyway, they made. Um, uh, it's no secret they train underwater too, and when the f when the um, plane goes up and down in these moments. Bueno, estos organizaciones tienen organizaciones tienen uh, mucho dinero de impuestos disponible para experimentar en diferentes. Um, Técnicas, por ejemplo, de um, fingir la gravedad en el espacio. Um, Habéis visto uh, las burbujas de aire de Torfa. No, no es un secreto que hacen experimentos uh, de entrenar bajo el agua. Y, uh, cuando el avión va arriba en ese momento de, gra de falta de gravedad. So now I'll paste the part of that interview with uh, James de Angelo. Bitcoin, Epic Center Bitcoin. Ahora voy a pegar una parte de la entrevista con James de Angelo, Bitcoin Center, Epic Center Bitcoin. So you mentioned before when you know when you heard about Bitcoin, you got so fascinated, and then you had this fascination also for the philosophy, the ideas behind it. What was it about those ideas that you found so fascinating? I I, I would say really I just loved. Well, I, I mean, let's be honest, we're all still understanding this philosophy, right? We're learning it every day. So I love the fact that it's new. So it's new philosophy, right? It makes us question what money is. It makes us question what centralization is. It makes us question almost everything. Um, it, we, we question how we can work together as humans. And so I guess I really love the fact that it's all exciting and new. It's, it's 2009 cents philosophy. Um, it, just by changing some simple things like the ability to have a decentralized consensus timestamp database right? It, it, it sounds ridiculously simple, right? Oh, that, yeah, okay, I, I agree that that transaction happened at that time. It's never been done before. It's never been unalterable before. And think of how terrible it is too, right? If I get a picture of my ex-girlfriend naked and post it on the blockchain, what's she going to do to take that down? Zero. It's the most terrifyingly, I mean, you could think, you, you, for all the beauty that we think of Bitcoin, think of all the terrible things you could do with it, right? That alone is just terrifying, right? She can't do anything to take that out. And there's no one she could sue. For all the very same reasons that it works as a currency, it works as something that can be very indelibly painful. And the world, just like, you know, the fact that we have cameras everywhere now, is just going to have to get used to it because this won't be uninvented, this this concept. When you kind of think back to, or, or even today, you know, when, when you think of both the concept of Bitcoin as well as, you know, cryptocurrency, blockchain, smart contracts, all, all of those things that sort of are tied to it, you know, when you think ahead, I don't know, your most optimistic or pessimistic, but this, you know, sort of vision of the future of like, what role do you see that playing in the world at some point? Um, and what role would you like it to play? Well, I, yeah, I, 
I, I'm a big, big fan of Vitalik Buterin, and especially I, 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 Ethereum, I'm neither here nor there on. Um, but he has been really, for me, a huge thought leader on these ideas of government and where things like this could really replace a lot of loopholes for corruption. Um, and, you know, again, the identity and, and climate change and the ability for Ugandans to interact and transact as equal citizens of this global world, as you, what you just mentioned, you know, universal basic income. Um, these are dreams, right? These are beautiful, beautiful dreams. Um, and I think they far outweigh any of the negatives that I've seen. Uh, but every technology has positives and negatives. So I, I, I see these dreams and I see them functioning and I understand the tech behind it. Really, it's we're waiting for the world to catch up um, to agree that that dream is worthwhile. Yeah, that, I think that is true, right? That's, at some point, people will, will start seeing some of these applications, you know, actually working. And, and there, there will be a shift of thinking that will happen that will be incredibly radical. And right? it's, it's, still, it's still some ways off. I mean, in a way, we have this little bubble where, you know, we see this very different future. And then the rest of the world is just like, what is this weird Bitcoin thing? What is this weird... Right, stuff right. you guys are focusing on uh but at some point they you know just it will all start unraveling i think and, and that that will be uh and i hate to harp quite... on the name but i think the name is a big stumbling block right when you hear coin in it you just think currency and it's been built to, around this idea of currency and i think it's all fine and good that it provides a currency and i think the currency is a killer app but when i started doing my series million killer apps i was trying to figure out myself how many beautiful, wonderful applications there were. And I just, it, it, inside of a week, I was like, there's too many to count. So I did the first episode thinking I would do two. And then I did the second one. I'm like, oh my God, this, I could do five more of these, um, of these killer, ridiculously beautiful applications uh, for for this technology. And And the nice thing is when I did the first video, most people were saying, well, there is no killer app. And the, I, I would say maybe my videos change that. I don't hear that as much anymore, right? Now it's like which killer app will come first or which of these applications might. But yeah, you're right. I think Bitcoin can be a, a bit of a stumbling block and, and a barrier. I mean, when I meet people now, you know, who know I do, you know, something with that, it's almost always one of the first questions is, you know, what's the price of Bitcoin? How is yeah. it? And it, it's just... I, I also think that actually Bitcoin as a currency is a killer app. It's awesome, but it's just one tiny, tiny part of all the things that are possible. And even even with Bitcoin as a currency, you know, to reduce it to a price is just sort of misses the point. But even even with uh, we, we can talk about this perhaps a bit later. But the, the shift of attention from Bitcoin to blockchain in the media and startups and everything we've talked about this before. Um, even with this shift, even when you're talking about blockchain, you still have to enter the conversation with Bitcoin. I just this 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 uh, at lunch this afternoon, uh, uh, someone asked me, you know, what, what I was working on, and you know, I'm, I'm talking about Stratum, and you know, we're, we're building blockchain solutions. And well, what's the blockchain? Well, you have to explain Bitcoin to them before you can get into the blockchain. So, yeah. uh, personally, I find that challenging, and I'd like to be able to find a way, especially when with regards to just blockchain technology, to explain it without having to talk about the currency. Yeah, and and, and it's a bit like saying, well, you know, here's an engine, and we're just going to ignore fuel. Um, you know, it, it, it you, you can't pull things apart so conveniently. Um, all engines that we ever make will require something that drives it. And uh, it is the driving force behind all of it. I noticed that I, I was a big fan of Counterparty. I, I loved that they were kind of competing with Ethereum. And they've basically been pulled off of all the um, the Reddit, the Reddit moders, moderators take Counterparty off because it developed its own little currency inside of Counterparty. But Counterparty still essentially based on Bitcoin, right? It, it's built on top of it. 
It's built, you can't use counterparty without using Bitcoin. And <clears throat> it's not even clear if the moderators understand the, the real idiocy of that, right? If counterparty does well, Bitcoin does well, it, it's inseparable. Um, and I think yeah. they just were smoking their Ethereum crack there, being afraid that it was a competitive blockchain. And it, it's really not. It's built, you, you have to have it. So um, it, it's an essential ingredient. Today's magic word is noses, N-O-S-E-S. -E Head over to letstalkbitcoin.com to sign in, enter the magic word, and claim your part of the listener reward. Well, with that, let's let's dive into one of the topics that you have thought a lot about, which is the the aspect of of centralization or, or decentralization, and the whole conversation around that. And of course, it's a conversation that I don't know how often we've talked about it, but it's it's, uh, it's just so <laughs> central to all of this. And it's yeah, the decentralization is so central. Um, so to get started with that. How do you think about decentralization and what what do you think we should focus on? Like what's a good metric to even say Bitcoin is, for example, decentralized or not decentralized? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I think we're jumping in almost at the deep end, but I'll, I'll try and roll with that. Um, Bitcoin's number one proposal, the number one thing that it's offering that's different is a decentralized consensus. That is its selling point. If you don't have that, there is absolutely nothing. Um, the fact that you get a currency out of that is really wonderful, right? So you have a decentralized consensus. So all these different miners are, we don't know where they are, are coming to agreement that the transaction took place. If it was centralized in any way, Someone could show up at that centralized area, point a gun to their head and say, reverse that transaction for that coffee I just bought. The whole beauty of it is we don't know where that person is who just validated that transaction. Now, there's other beautiful things. We incentivize that person to, to mine that transaction and all that. But really, if, if there's only one value proposal that Bitcoin's offered to the world that's changed the game, the novelty of Bitcoin is decentralized consensus. So if we prioritize at all away from that, we are prioritizing away from Bitcoin. We are prioritizing away from the ability to maintain a currency. The moment transactions are reversed by any centralized authority, the price, which everyone seems to care about, goes to zero. So Bitcoin as a framework dies. Um, now, we could all think of really tragic places to have that centralization take place. So say, for example, all of a sudden, all the centralization was taking place by some corrupt dictator uh, in some corrupt country, and he owned all the mining. I would suspect that most people would stop calling Bitcoin a decentralized consensus and they would all be bailing out pretty quickly. So centralization and decentralization are the main ingredients. If, if you talk Bitcoin, you have to talk those, those terms very clearly. The trouble is we have built mining in such a way that it's anonymous. So if I wanted today to go out and buy some mining hardware and jump on the network without a name, I can. Well, if I wanted today to go out and buy half of all the mining hardware and jump on the network, I can. That is a choice that I make and I make alone. Whereas with Coinbase or a mining pool, you're socially tied into your, the people you're serving. So if I join a mining pool, I am only part of other people joining. And if the mining pool starts acting badly, we all grab our hardware and we point it at another mining pool. Or if Coinbase starts acting badly, there are centralized institutions. We take our money out and we go to Circle or we just run paper wallets. The mining hardware is our choice. Anybody who wants to can choose to jump in. 
And anybody who wants to own as much as they want can. So that's the dangerous. Everyone talks about mining pools, ghash.io. I was bored to death with that whole ghash.io because I'm like, they're going to lose all their customers tomorrow if they go beyond 51%. And that's pretty much what happened. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of Coinbase, people are worried about Coinbase. I, it just bores me. I, I'm not concerned about that. The community is too active and too passionate to let that happen. The trouble is in 2013, I don't know, did you guys mine ever? Were you ever mining? No. In 2013 I think I mined at the meetups. For about five minutes on my CPU. But <laughs> yeah. In, <laughs> at the meetups, everybody mined. My nephew, who was 11, mined. You wouldn't mind. Why wouldn't you mind? It was just too fun, right? You buy the little USB thing in, you slap it in, and you've got big. Okay, points. I did have one of those actually. <laughs> oh, you did have one of those. Did you? Did you yeah, actually USB make anything? One, yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like twenty dollars as a joke. It wasn't like it to actually, you know. Right, right, and and even the price of those was varying dramatically, right? People didn't even know how to speculate on those because of the new Asics coming out. And I remember selling them for way more than I bought them. Um, so I made more money selling the hardware than actually mining. Um, but nobody mines now. I don't know anyone who mines. Sure, people mine, but. The, the percent of people has gone terribly low. And we now have people claiming that greater than 50%, I've heard as high as 70% of the miners are in China. Um, and the Chinese are probably hate hearing this. Why do you guys always pick on the Chinese? You know, we're, we're okay, right? But the Chinese have a very different government. They have a very powerful leader. They have single individuals, centralized people who can make very quick and powerful decisions, as we saw during the Olympics in Beijing, where you can move entire communities of people um, to put up a racetrack. So we, we have at this point today put most of our mining under a very strong government. Can we measure decentralization? No. Do we have a pretty good idea that it's being centralized dramatically? Yes. The fact that we can't measure it, I would say, is a big problem for people who like to think that we're following science and math. The fact that we know that it's centralizing and centralizing underneath someone who's made, even in the last few weeks, some very powerful, Xi Jinping has made some very powerful censorship maneuvers in his country just in the past few weeks. The Economist just did an article on it. Um, Here's a guy who doesn't care about Bitcoin right now. He doesn't probably might not even know what it is. But what happens if Taiwan tomorrow decides to adopt Bitcoin as a national currency? Well, Xi Jinping will be very curious about what's going on. What happens if Bitcoin suddenly being used for gambling in Macau or, or, or other areas? What happens if it's used for any sort of remittances in and out? That, that really matter to China. I'm sure some of it happens now, but it's not at any reasonable percentage. Then you have someone who, A, can control all the mining. I'm sure he can find all the big miners. They're public. They're, they're fairly well known at this point. Um, but he could follow them probably just by some simple sleuthing of electricity. And he can control them. So today, we, are, we face a very strong centralization risk that we can't change. We can't point our miners away from them because those are the very hardware is actually there. And they are, as you mentioned before, Brian, they also do a lot of the chip processing. I'd be surprised if any ASIC was manufactured in the U S maybe a couple. Um, but I, I'd suspect that all the ASICs are being manufactured in China as well. Yeah, no, I, I agree. That's, it's one of the things that's also the, that's the scary aspect of that too is you, you can do all sorts of maneuvers with saying okay we're going to do this change to the bitcoin protocol or that change to bitcoin protocol are we going to make a bigger block size or a smaller block size it really doesn't touch that aspect at all i mean it's it, one can try right but it's really hard because this is this is very deeply ingrained in the economics of Bitcoin. So if you want to change that, you really have to fundamentally change something about the sort of economics of how Bitcoin works. And that's just extremely hard. 
So it's it's almost a, a problem that, yeah, how can it be solved? It's not so clear to me. Right. You have this, what is it, segregated witness. You have lots of proposals to to lower the requirements for mining by a factor of two, a factor of 10, et cetera. Does that mean suddenly 10 times as many individuals are going to be jumping in and starting to mine? Maybe, though I doubt it. What it really means is you're basically providing a 10 times incentive for current miners to maintain what they're doing or invest more. So we've, we've actually made it 10 times less expensive for them to do what they're doing. Um, and so they will make a, who knows what, a much bigger return on investment. Um, so I certainly know of segregated witness and all these things. I'm not going to pull out my USB ASIC and start mining again, right? That's just ridiculous. We're at a gajillion petahashes right now. Um, I would have to reinvest and buy new hardware. Um, so I don't see that day, the, the, the dream day that everyone's talking about from Gavin, Peter Todd on down is that we're going to somehow write the technology such that it's going to be 2013 again when you go to the meetup and everyone's talking about mining. And I don't think anything based on history of economies of scale suggests that that's going to happen. So that's, it's a dream. It's a, it's a pipe dream. It's, it's a false dream. Yeah, I, I mean, one, one could imagine some things, right? So let, let's say, because the, the issue is you have some centralization pressures, right? So first of all, this the, the latency thing with mining makes it uh, a lot more attractive to be a big miner, right? You have you have a clear advantage in terms of, you know, your block doesn't get orphaned. So, so that's a problem. But if we, for example, talked about uh, Bitcoin NG, that would solve that, right? So you, you could do that and that would at least solve the latency problem. And then of course you still have the thing with the, the hardware uh, and um, you know, the, the cost of hardware and the economies of scale there. But you know, if, if you did do a proof of work uh, algorithm where you, know, you can't really build an ASIC for it or, or it's really inefficient to build an ASIC for it, but everybody has sort of a, you know, a spare resource to use like you know, spare computational cycles, then, you know, those economics could actually change to make it just economically unattractive to, to build, build ASICs and build big mining farms. Um, so it's, it's possible. It's of course, would one require huge changes to Bitcoin, which isn't going to happen. I mean, if you can't even agree on a barely anything, there's just absolutely zero possibility of, of that happening. Um, and you know, then you also start having other vulnerabilities maybe with botnets and stuff. I don't know if that's so much of a concern, probably not. Well, I'd, I'd say it's a very real concern. Um, so the, that's the big fear, right? The, keep in mind that when Bitcoin grew, it grew without predators, right? It, it was growing in this very beautiful space because no one saw any value in it. And so it, it was able to grow up without all this attention and, and, and massive hackers. And, and so bots, botnets are, are the argument right now for coming up with an ASIC resistant uh, algorithm. The, there's everything that we're talking about is is some leads to some problem. Um, so if you come up with a brand new ASIC, of course, economies of scale, even if you're just mining on your chips, there's economies of scale there. There's huge economies of scale, mining all together as opposed to having to broadcast your networks, et cetera. So you, <clears throat> we, we, we'd love to think that, you know, those halcyon days of 2011 can be created by some hardware or software thing that we're going to go and kind of recreate that environment, but that environment will never be recreated, right? Because the innocence that existed there um, was essential to the growth of Bitcoin. Um, certainly, if you went back in time and it was 2009 or 2010, you'd be mining like a maniac um, and looking <laughs> to centralize as much as possible. Um, if it, No one at that point was thinking that. Right. So Gavin's throwing out his bitcoins. He's giving them out on his 
Bitcoin faucet. People are paying $10,000, 10,000 Bitcoins for a pizza. <clears throat> it's a bit like playing with Monopoly money. The only reason no one turns around and starts printing really beautiful copies of your Monopoly money is because there's no value in it. But as soon as those things take off, well, you've incentivized people to, to be corrupt. And so that transition happened in 2012. Um, so it's a very, very different environment. And, you know, I hate to say it, but Satoshi made a massive, massive mistake by assuming that decentralization can happen via hardware. And again, if we look at centralization as the key ingredient of what Bitcoin is, he's made a massive and fundamental mistake in his development of Bitcoin. And it's just something that's happening slowly as, as, as the miners are pooling and moving together. And I, I saw the scaling Bitcoin. I, I think even one of them said, you know, 85% of all Bitcoin mining is sitting here at this panel right now. I was like, that's freaking terrifying, right? That's the last thing I want to hear. Um, and, and they're all sitting there. And what if they make one little deal between themselves, right? Um, and all of a sudden, 85% is walking out in one guy's pocket. Um, so again, the only thing we're offering is decentralization. And the only thing we're not talking about is decentralization. The only thing we're not concerned about, everyone's concerned about anonymity. You know, fuck anonymity. Um, it's the second ingredient right? It, 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 you know, we really have to be careful about that. Our show today is brought to you by your friends at Shapeshift. Shapeshift is the fast and easy way to trade altcoins and they now support over 50 of the most popular altcoins that you all know and love. When you want to trade altcoins, you can do this the hard way, which means creating an account at an exchange, uh, giving them your personal information, sending your money there, putting your trades through and growing old, waiting for those trades to complete. Or you can do it the easy way, which means no accounts, no signups, and getting it done in less than one minute while enjoying a cocktail, for instance. Have you ever looked at one of these mobile phones and wondered what they're good for? Wondered what purpose they serve? What one could possibly do with them? Well, finally, Shapeshift has created a mobile application to trade altcoins with those phones and give them some actual functionality. So if you want that, you can, you can get the Shapeshift mobile application. You can get that at the application procurement center. They call this the iTunes uh, store and Google play store. Uh, you can download that there. And when you do that, it's going to do two things. It's going to, first of all, it's going to add a Fox to your home screen and that's going to make your phone a lot nicer. And it's also going to give you the ability to trade altcoins wherever you are. And that is change we can believe in. Uh, so we'd like to thank Shapeshift for their support of Epson Bitcoin. You said the mistake Satoshi made was that he assumed that you could get decentralization through hardware. I mean, uh, there's this famous quote in the white paper, right? One CPU, one vote. I Sounds know, how beautiful. There. That's the dream, beautiful. right? That's right. the dream. Right. And right um, now we're course. sitting here in massive vote buying scandal of all time, right? Yeah, it didn't quite work out that way. Um, I've got three CPUs in my house. I have zero votes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> then let's, let's get right to that question. What should Satoshi have done differently? Well, again, it's how do we define decentralization, right? Decentralization just between the three of us exists. We all have very different dreams for what we want for Bitcoin. But if our three computers were mining Bitcoin, there's no decentralization between our computers. They're all mining it the exact same way. So if I buy your two computers and leave them connected to your IP addresses and I'm able to control them remotely, I've centralized the mining even though it looks decentralized. But if I'm arguing with Brian and Sebastian about how we should mine transactions, we'll never centralize. We'll always disagree. So the difference here is decentralization can only be measured by humans, the number of humans. If the number of humans drops, decentralization drops, period. Who cares how many CPUs or ASICs or nodes exist? That means nothing. What I care about is how many people own those nodes, 
right? So counting nodes is like, you're just sitting there wanking off, right? You're, you're telling yourself that it's decentralized. It's just not. OK, that, that's no evidence of decentralization at all. I could go on AWS right now, Amazon Cloud, and build a billion nodes for an hour, right? And, and, and do some massive mining, right? It'll cost me a, a ton. And I'll look as decentralized as you want to be. Trouble is, I'm just me. And I really do want to reverse the price I paid for that coffee, you know, an hour ago. And so what, then in, in that case, how, so you mentioned... Uh, people, it's important to know how many people are behind these miners, these mining rigs. And you did an interesting video called Nodes versus Noses, where um, you argue that you know, there should be one nose b behind every node, uh, one physical <laughs> person. Uh, how, how can we achieve that then? It, it, it seems difficult to, uh, uh, without, if we compromise anonymity, on an, uh, unless we want to compromise on anonymity, um, it seems un unlikely that uh, we'll be able to achieve a situation where we have you know, many nodes and as many people behind those nodes as possible. Yeah, I, I think difficult is a very good word. And I think idealistic is another very good word, right? We, we've gone through 2009 to 2014 sort of thinking we could have our cake and eat it too, right? And we've never really looked at the problem square in its face. It's really easy when you're beginning a system to think you can have all the design constraints. But, you know, Tesla right now is going to be faced with competition from Porsche. And I, I think they're going to see their profit margins shrink and they're going to have to change some of their dreams of how they build cars as competition comes in. We're seeing the same thing in Bitcoin, where we're going to have to sacrifice some of our design constraints to maintain the things that are essential to us. And certainly, if we see centralization of hardware, which has already happened today, we have to take that very, very seriously. We have to stop, you know, Gavin and Dreesen saying eight megabyte blocks at the risk of centralization or 20 megabyte blocks at the risk of centralization. That's the most dangerous thing you can say on Earth, right? Because we're already very centralized today whatever day it is, December 18th, 2015, right? We're, we're centralized now. Anything that moves up, I'm like, when Peter Todd started saying I might be in for smaller blocks, I was like, yeah, let's kick this can down the road for a little bit. Let's keep it as decentralized as possible. I don't care about how much people are paying per transaction because it keeps the dream alive. People are like, oh, transactions should be cheap. Yeah, that's a great design constraint. Yeah, miners should be anonymous. Yeah, that's great too. Yeah, it should be decentralized. Yeah, that's essential. That's not great. That's essential. You don't have that. You have nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, my thinking on that is, I agree with you. It is very centralized already. Bitcoin is way too centralized, right? It should be much, much more decentralized. It's just that, like, we are here with one megabyte, right? So if you say we're going to stay here with one megabyte, I don't think that decentralization is going to increase, right? It's, it's going to, you're going to continue going towards more centralization. If you're going to go eight megabyte, is it going to be, you know, substantially different? I'm not so sure. All right, but let's just check your first assumption there. You said if we stay at one megabyte, decentralization or centralization um, might not change. The truth is we can't measure it, right? That's because we aren't counting individuals. And we know, we really do in our gut know that it's being centralized even if we stick at one megabyte, right? So it's currently centralizing. It might be at a logarithmic or exponential pace, which is my guess that it's going that fast. Um, so we don't know, even if we just said, let's do everything we can to avoid increasing any form of centralization and stick at one megabyte. I would say that's still dangerous. I would still say that's, we're playing, we're rolling dice here. And we're rolling the dice very aggressively against our only design criteria that really matters. So, yeah, I, I think we're safe today. I don't think Xi Jinping is really to make a move yet, but please don't call the network trustless anymore. Because now I'm trusting the fact that he doesn't want to make a move. I mean, forget 
forget this idea that we're protected by math. Bitcoin's a social institution, right? When you tell me you're protected by rubber gloves or condoms, I go, it all depends on how you use it and how much people want to attack. Your girlfriend can snip off your condom in two seconds, right? Your condom doesn't protect you. If you put your condom on your head, it doesn't protect you either. Same with rubber gloves. Same with math. If, if you're not careful of how you're being attacked, math doesn't protect you at all. It's, there's no honey badger here. There's no, this will work if we don't organize. We have to organize, period. All right? And, and if we don't organize and start measuring and counting decentralization, we're just letting it centralize because it is currently happening. It's like the tide. It's coming in. So, yeah, I, I, I'm strong on that because I, I feel strong on that. But go ahead where you were going with the eight megabytes or whatever. Well, actually, let's not talk about that because I think we've, we've talked about that a lot. I think it's it's more interesting to talk a little bit about the, the more... Um, the bigger picture here. So, you know, we talked about, or you, you called Satoshi having made a mistake. What should we have done differently? <laughs> um, it's one thing to see a problem. It's another to offer like a, a, a solution that works. Um, I, I think he's a genius. I think the dream he's offered us is the most beautiful dream I've bumped into in my life. But he did make a mistake. The one, I think you said it best, the one GPU, one vote has been compromised dramatically. Um, and he's nowhere close to that being correct. Right. But if you say he's made a mistake, that, I mean, he definitely made a mistaken statement there. Like the statement turned out to be very wrong. No question about that. And that is a super significant thing that happened there. No question about that. But if you say, you know, he made a mistake, uh, sort of implies that, well, he could have done something better, right? So he, well, he could have made some different design choice at that stage that, you know, maybe wouldn't have led to the situation we currently are in. Um, I, I hear you. I, I hear what you're saying. I'm not always so sure that I can be that confident, right? It's, it's one thing to say someone made a mistake when they're designing a spacecraft to go to light speed, um, and it's another to come up with the solution to make sure you go to light speed. It's not clear that a decentralized consensus is anything still but a dream today. Um, so we have it, it's working so far, but you know, the, the turkey on Thanksgiving morning said everything's working so far. Um, and, and then the farmer comes in after treating it so nicely all its life and hacks off its head. Um, everything's working so far is a terrible measure of a system and it was, what was yelled at me when I first presented this idea in the green room of a conference by someone who's working heavily on scaling Bitcoin, right? It's working so far, don't mess with it. And I'm like, uh, that's a strange measure of a system. Um, and, and you can see people who are very invested in scaling being um, very invested in making sure that Bitcoin is scaled through hardware or software because they're building these projects. Now, if my axiom is correct, and as I say, an axiom can be torn asunder by just one tiny little fact. So all I need is one little fact to prove it's not. If, if my axiom is correct, which is that decentralization and anonymity are incompatible. So you can't have, you can't prove one, uh, you can't prove both. You can only establish one or the other. So if you are looking for decentralization, then you really do need to sacrifice the anonymity of miners. And I would say a lot of the miners are sacrificed currently we we know who they are but that's not what i'm talking about is the ability to choose their identity in some way as well right so say xi Jinping was mining everything and and we knew who he was so identity doesn't help us there it just terrifies us um we would have to come up with some way to to choose them to vote or elect them now this is where every bitcoiner is probably going to want to shoot me and i might have to watch my head is we really have to understand that it's now a social network that we're building. And the only way to build it would be maybe to look at some systems that have kind of sucked, which have been, you know, Congress of the United States or, or something like that, where we actually vote for a percentage of minors. Now I, I could see leaving 
49% of the network is proof of work. But anything over that, I think, is you're asking for a disaster. Um, you know. Wait, wait, can you explain that? What do you mean with 49% of the network is proof of work? Well, I, I, don't, I don't look at the technology, as I said, as much as I should. Like, is there a way to alternate between an identity-based miner and uh, proof of work in such a way that, that we're convinced that it's working correctly. I'm not so sure. That's, this, those aren't easy problems at all. And even the, the whole idea of, so let me just go backwards for what I propose in my video is, say, for example, today, we just added one person that we knew had no real mining gear into the network. So we we just chose Andreas Antonopoulos to mine one tenth of all trans all, all all blocks. So every tenth block he comes along and mines it. There's some real powerful beauty there, right? He can take all the free transactions and mine them. He's not doing proof of work. He doesn't need an ASIC. He does it on his phone, right? Does all the transactions, a billion transactions, he mines them. And then the very next block you'd hand back to proof of work. Of course, it would take them a little bit longer to go through and validate those transactions and they'd mine forward. The beauty is he's not invested in mining hardware. So we've suddenly decentralized the incentive structure of mining just by adding one individual who we kind of know and trust. I would sleep so much better at night if you, Brian, and you, Sebastian, and five other random Bitcoin people from Reddit were involved in this process because I know you guys don't have a ton of money. Well, I don't know, but I would assume you don't have mining hardware, which is better than knowing that all the mining hardware is controlled by people who own it. Um, but of course, the problem with that is that you don't really know. I mean, I could have a ton of mining hardware. I could have financial interest in Correct. Uh, in, in mining company shares, for example. like I Correct. Absolutely 100% correct. You with, with the U.S. Congress, with any group of representatives, you run into all kinds of corruption and bastards and assholes, and it all sucks. But is it the best thing we've got? And I'm just saying, if we want to maintain a decentralized consensus, we have to figure out some way to be decentralized. And that's humanly decentralized. If I had one representative from each district on Earth mining randomly, I would sleep a billion times better than those guys all sitting on the panel in China um, waiting for Xi Jinping to decide whether he wants to go to war with Bitcoin. And transact, by the way, the there's two other huge advantages. Say, say we do this, right? And no one's ever going to want to do this because I, I probably sound like I'm on crack right now. But say we do this. Scaling goes to near infinity right away because you don't need proof of work because it's broken. Um, and you have a Bitcoin governance thing now where all these people, these delegated miners can actually vote in a way that we would trust a little bit better than just having the miners vote or the core devs vote or or the exchanges vote. I mean, really what you are talking about is a proof of stake system, right? No, 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 not at all. These None of these people need to have stake. I don't think proof of stake, proof of stake like proof of work suffers from some issues that may or may not be solvable. But I'm talking so about proof of no's. Um, proof of identity, proof of reputation. Um, right, right. But you have to, I mean, who is going to choose those people? Exactly, exactly. That's, these are all the choices that, why would I offer a solution, right? How are we going to vote for these people? Well, you am can I, say, am I going to be able to vote, vote so with your you, private key, right? Right. And then you have a proof of stake sort of thing where, you know, all of a sudden Roger Ver gets all the votes. Um or, or, well, or but Satoshi gets are, half I mean, the it, it, there's certainly a lot of things wrong with that system. Of course, maybe even better would be if you had the identity system. You could say just well, every human can vote, right? Like just vote on who gets to. That would be preferable to Roger Ver having whatever, 500,000 votes. And, and, uh, and I agree with the latter as opposed to the. Also, because um, uh, proof of stake. Everything I've seen about it leads to some intrinsic problems as well. Um, until we accept that 
there's a social construct problem here. You know, we're, we're, we're playing games. I mean, there's a bit of a high school mentality of Bitcoin, as you, you've probably seen. You know, it's like, yeah, honey badger. Yeah, honey badger, right? And it's like, is anyone really measuring decentralization? When, when someone says decentralized consensus, has anyone ever provided data? There's been no data on that period, right? We have no data on that. So we're all playing games because we've taken over some world economy and it's worth, you know, $5 billion or whatever it's worth. But I think there's something much more beautiful here. I mean, I'm very passionate about Bitcoin and, and you know, talking about this is obviously no fun for me either. I didn't like thinking of it. You know, I told my wife when I spoke at the conference, I go, this might be my last Bitcoin conference because I'll be shot. Um, it, it didn't make me happy. Um, but it's a reality that it needs to be considered and measured. So I'm not going to say the solution is vote for a thousand people, though. I think that's probably the way that might, that's the way in my mind right now that makes the most sense. I would say the solution needs to be thought about by some people who are a lot smarter than me. Um, but we are now aware of the problem. But if the solution is a thousand people, we've solved a lot of Bitcoin problems right there. You know, we can scale to visa levels tomorrow. Um, so there's some nice silver lining. There's no way to scale using any of the scaling solutions unless uh, maybe lightning a network, uh, you know, but then I don't know, you know, I, I look at lightning network a little bit like counterparty. You're building something above and beyond. I mean, I agree with you on some points, but I, I, I guess there's sort of two sides, right? I think on the one hand, it, this is sort of a, a actual idea, right? It's like sort of a half-baked idea that has, in terms of a lot of details that you sort of, you know, gloss over. And oh, yeah. You're, you're absolutely right about that. It's, it's not even a tenth I, baked. Right. Right. I think... When you when you think about a, you know a truly decentralized you know resilient currency because or, or dis, uh, distributed system you know whatever it is used for whether currency or smart contracts or whatnot, uh, it's pretty clear to me right now you know Bitcoin uh, you know it sort of works as advertised more or less I mean at least it uh, it's not being uh, even though it's not particularly decentralized it's not being abused because you know we would sort of see that. Um, but it's not resilient. I think you totally pointed that out correctly, right? You could have the Chinese government go in there and take over. Or they, I think there's just a variety of points. So you could have those 85% that were there sitting on the same table uh, and having uh, you know dinner together in some private room afterwards, uh, come up with all kinds of schemes. And of course, if you know, let's say the US government or some government said like, okay, well, we have a problem with this Bitcoin thing. Well. You know, they know those guys, right? That right, right, were right. like announced, they're 85%. And I mean, right. the US government doesn't have a very hard time taking people out, right? So that would be, uh, you know, there's no way they could uh, protect themselves. So it's it's not resilient. It's like clearly not resilient. And if there is a strong interest to sort of go after Bitcoin, you know, pe uh, organizations could, governments could, right? Um, so if, So you obviously would need to decentralize it. And then I think you do need to deal with the economic problems, right? These economic in incentives that are there for centralization. And I think those are just... They will always be there. Why do we have antitrust laws? I mean, people who make bread in their houses all the time. People used to make beer in their houses all the time. Everything on earth has been centralized. The big article came out recently. Oh, YouTube videos, all the most watched ones are now corporations. Right. We, we thought we had this big decentralized thing, but, you know, half the views now are, are, are big companies. Centralization happens in everything. In Europe, you have antitrust laws. Why do we set up laws to prevent monopolies? Because they always happen for everything. So you have them in Korea, you have them in Japan, you have them in the United States. They're some of our most serious laws. And the rule number two is to prevent Complete control by one entity. In, in 1860, in the United States, Jay Gould is his name, tried to corner gold. Gold. He tried to corner gold. 
right? And he got very close. If he wasn't like kind of wrecked by how the president reacted, he was going to corner gold. I'll repeat, gold. People were using gold back then. All right. We have laws to prevent that, right? For very, very important reasons, because economies of scale dictate no matter what you do, someone doing a lot of it is going to do it better. And so you're going to be asked out. Imagine in 2013, if we had a panel of all the miners, <laughs> like what Coliseum are you going to put them in? What 10 Coliseums, right? And, and you can see that picture very, very differently. So, the, so is, it, is it is it inevitable then? I mean, just look at the internet. Look at the you know internet hosting. It's controlled by AWS, Amazon, and you know a, hand, a handful of other companies that everybody exactly goes there. they have the infrastructure. That's how it works. Exactly. And everybody seems to be you know somewhat comfortable with that. I mean, look at uh, DNS and all these other systems. Right, because the stuff. number one design criterion of AWS isn't decentralization. The number one design criteria is to provide internet hosting. Correct. All right. Yeah. Remember that Bitcoin is doing something no one's ever done, where the number one design constraint is decentralization. And the only parallels that we have of that are democratic governments. There's nothing else in history that you're going to find that requires decentralization of some form. The very reason that we, we establish ID in Europe is so that you can vote, so we can decentralize the decision-making process on those transactions, because don't get me wrong, what is Europe? It's basically a big company that's distributing billions and billions of dollars, and that's being decided upon by a decentralized group of people. Now, someone might come up with some other model, but I just can't even see it. If I am correct that noses matter, then we need to put noses into the system. And right now, Bitcoin has loved claiming that math is protecting us. So... All I'm saying is we, we people love to go, oh, it's like the Internet in the early days. Bullshit. It's like uh, Linux. Bullshit, right? Linux, you could break off your own chain. You could develop comfortably on it. You could run Linux beautifully on your company. If you do that with Bitcoin, it, it's not Bitcoin, right? It's it's another currency. And, and you can never reintegrate them later. You can't just you can't spoon them together. So that that one just one last sentence. So that one design criterion decentralized makes it something that's never existed before. It's the implication of what you're saying now that this will only be ever uh, achievable when we have figured out identity. So we can say, you know, you, James, you have <laughs> one vote, uh, not more than one vote. And, you know, you can vote on, you know, for example, who are those representatives? Well, I, I hear you. Yes, if we want it. To, so what is the definition of maximally decentralized? That's very easy to define. It's 7.3 billion individual people voting, right? That is maximum. That's You can't get more decentralized until we discover people on Mars or Jupiter, right? So every individual would have a vote. We don't need maximally decentralized. I would be very comfortable with knowing all times that we've got around a thousand differently incentivized people. Okay. And there the identity then relies on identifying a thousand people in some form or fashion. I'd be very happy identifying people from Skype conversations. I'd be very happy identifying them from their public personas and public presence, even though I've never met them. Um, and indeed that's, that works pretty well in a number of places. Um, so, Right now, we're moving towards minimally decentralized. And yeah, AWS is a great comparison, right? Google and Microsoft are competing, but that's that's works for them. It doesn't work at all for currency. James, thanks so much for coming on. This has been uh, it's been interesting. I think we are we are sort of at the end of the show. Although I'm sure we could keep going for a very long time <laughs> with with this discussion. <laughs> and and I'm sure I'm sure in some way we are continuing this discussion and uh, hope, hopefully you will, you will do so in your videos we will do so here and perhaps we will do so again once in in the same context here um yeah so thanks so much for taking the time and, and thanks so much James. for for the work you're doing yeah great great work you guys are doing as well really big fan hope to continue whatever whichever conversations yeah, so of course, for a listener, we will have links to to his videos, to his YouTube channel, and to his uh, appearances as a 1990s rapper as well in the show notes. 
Um, and so, yeah, thanks so much for listening. So Epicenter Bitcoin is part of the LTB network. So of course you, you can find our show and you can also find lots of other great shows on letstalkbitcoin.com. And uh, we put out episodes every Monday. So you can, of course, subscribe to it on, you know, on your uh, podcast app, or you can also watch the videos on YouTube. And that's on youtube.com slash Epicenter BTC. And yeah, if you're a loyal listener, we're still doing the the t-shirt the t-shirt contest. Basically, leave us a review, send us an email, and uh, you know we'll, we'll send you a t-shirt. And um, it's not really a contest it. anymore. It's just like yeah, it's not us, a contest. Give us a actually. review, and you know, we'll yeah, send it's, you a it's a misnomer. It's <laughs> not a contest. <laughs> Those are nice t-shirts. You guys have mediums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll we'll get you one. Oh, I'm I'm gonna work um, on that. absolutely. But you gotta leave us a review though on iTunes. I will. Oh, I have, but I, I will leave. Okay, then we will then we'll send a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much, and yeah, we'll be back next week. Bye, guys. Great meeting y'all. Der hat auch viele Videos über Bitcoin gemacht und sein Name ist James D'Angelo. Interview mit Epic Center Bitcoin und ähm, äh, ja, teilweise. Jedenfalls, ähm, ähm, der halt über ein Problem in Bitcoin gesprochen und zwar, das ist die Decentralization, die Dezentralisation, wie sagt man in Deutschen vielleicht, ich weiß. Ja, jedenfalls, äh, jetzt früher war es ganz einfach zu äh, Mining, also die, die Bitcoins herzustellen am eigenen Computer, Aha. ja, aber ähm, mit der Zeit wird es jetzt immer schwieriger, das ist halt in den Code eingebaut, ja, und und er äh, hat halt da Lösungsvorschläge von äh, da zu wählen, manche, die halt, dass es mehr verteilt wird halt, ja. Weil äh, wenn zu viel Macht in äh, manchen Händen ist, dann werden es korrupt. Das sieht man ja besonders bei den Politikern, nicht wahr? Mhm. Und aber denk mehr in der, und ja, äh, ist natürlich ja ja da ist noch warm. er hat halt halt das so Lösungsvorschlag ja äh, dass äh, durch w Wahlen äh, Leute auswählen dass es mehr verteilt wird aber ich denke das ist nicht die die beste Lösung ich denke es ist besser genauso wie ich ja die letzte Zeit viele Videos von diesem Jameson angehört habe und zwar das Thema Free Energy ja weil das Mining das Proble Hauptproblem ist einfach weil es sehr viel Elektrizität kostet nicht wahr und ähm, wenn äh, da äh, jetzt Nikolas Tesla weiß ja wurde äh, unterdrückt die Erfindung wegen den Kooperationeninteressen und äh, wenn einfach viel mehr Elektrizität verfügbar wäre könnte jeder oder äh, sich äh, Nachbarn zusammentun und gemeinsam äh, Bitcoin Mining nicht wahr ja nee aber äh, das Thema ja sicher ist immer Problem mit Nachbarn sicher aber äh, das Thema Free Energy äh, wie er halt beschrieb ich bin kein Expert in Free Energy aber jedenfalls ist das äh, viel mehr möglich, wenn sich äh, zwei, drei oder einige zusammentun, nicht wahr? Aber in, in, unter Nachbarn ja, ist dann halt... Die Kultierer, äh, nachbarschaftlich äh, nutzen wollen. Ja, sicher, sicher. Das ist halt äh, immer ein Problem. Kaputt, ja, ja. Weil, äh, es wurde nie was drauf. Ja, ja. Hm. Und aber die... die, die, die Nicht in Tropfen. <lacht> ah, ja, 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 ja. <lacht> Im Video will ich jetzt erstmal fertig machen. Da könnte ich mich kaputt lachen. Tut mir leid, wenn ich Nachbarn höre. Ja, sicher. Das ist
esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's a, rather a game. Uh, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important uh, to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want, in, that, in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y Uh, this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, I explain. Después, I expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret 
uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these three, four years. So you lose this. That's the this part of the game. as uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos y solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, first, I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in the Simpsons people have a four fingers and only God has five fingers. Uh, I'll show some pictures for you. Enseñar algunos imágenes de los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en en cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be big help. Uh, no solo para... Bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So uh, it's, this is the game part, if uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person, but if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out, and it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada, y si por ejemplo, okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar un Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have, have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. ¿Qué es Bitcoin? Bitcoin es la primera moneda digital descentralizada. Los Bitcoins son monedas digitales que puedes enviar a través de Internet. Comparado con otras alternativas, Bitcoin tiene numerosas ventajas. Los Bitcoins son transferidos directamente de persona a persona a través de la red sin pasar por un banco u otro intermediario. Esto significa que las comisiones son mucho menores, puedes usarlo en cualquier país, tu cuenta no puede ser congelada y no hay prerequisitos o límites arbitrarios.
Miremos cómo funciona. Los bitcoins son generados en todo internet por cualquiera con un programa gratuito llamado Minero de Bitcoin. Crear bitcoins requiere una cierta cantidad de trabajo para cada bloque de monedas. Esta cantidad se ajusta automáticamente por la red, para que los bitcoins siempre sean creados a un ratio predecible y limitado. Tus bitcoins se guardan en tu billetera digital, que te resultará familiar si usas banca digital. Cuando transfieres bitcoins, una firma electrónica es añadida. Pasados unos minutos, la transacción es verificada por el minero y es almacenada permanente y anónimamente por la red. El software de Bitcoin es completamente abierto y cualquiera puede revisar el código. Bitcoin está cambiando las finanzas de la misma manera que la web ha cambiado el periodismo. Cuando cualquiera tiene acceso al mercado global, florecen grandes ideas. Miremos algunos ejemplos de cómo los Bitcoins están usándose hoy en día. Puedes comprar videojuegos, regalos, libros, servidores y calcetines de alpaca. Existen varias casas de cambio donde puedes intercambiar tus bitcoins por dólares, euros y más. Los bitcoins son una gran forma para que pequeños negocios y autónomos reciban publicidad. No cuesta nada empezar a aceptarlos, no hay cargos o comisiones y recibirás negocio adicional de la economía bitcoin. Para tus primeros bitcoins y más información visita weusecoins.com Bueno, ahora voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de los dedos de Simpsons. Now I'll show some pictures of the fingers of Simpson. The four fingers, los cuatro dedos y cinco dedos de Dios. The four fingers and five fingers of God of Simpsons. Español, English, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produziere ich nur videos in English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ja, algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video Hashtag BTC4. Now, already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. 
estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I am sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten uh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin. And give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im moment is the price von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15th, 2015. Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my for the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich en folgenden, folgenden. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. 
oder Trinkgeld im Restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin, de direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen druckt, auch die, äh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin-Adress-Schlüsseln, ähm, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha, más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute uh, the Bitcoin addresses, you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener, tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in, this, um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du äh, bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way, you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. In mi video antigo. Apparently and historically, opposed to secret society, secret oath, and a secret proceedings. We decided long ago the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Face the facts, join our hands, make a stand. Uh -huh. It's time to gather plans, get the shot, take the chance. Till there is no one left, stay correct to the death. They
can't ever break a freedom, we will never let it. The corrupt politics is killing the system. Cynicism is it, and it's everything that you witness. They tell you what to think, make you believe that they're the realness. They feed us full of lies, and yet we always forgive them. Huh? It's all conspiracy, and if you're it in a witch, you're the puppet. The government's pulling strings from above you. It's time for the introduction to truth, and let's start a movement. We've all been brainwashed, they believe that we all are stupid. We believe in what we see, and whatever I right is, and hearing. But if you look close, listen, gather your own opinion, you'll understand all the lies, lines, and what's between them. This world is not your oyster, this world is a fucking prison. Come on. happening in our nation. We all will stand up for the fear of assassination. So they strip us of everything. We stand there and just take it. We're scared to make a stand, a false flag operation. Research Illuminati. Find out by 9 11. You see they line their pockets, don't believe the lies they tell us. Find to seek the truth, realize we need to do whatever it is we can to protect our lives. It's time for us to do when the conspiracy or not. They owe some explanations to the questions that we got. What are the skull and bones? What is lying beneath all these secretive means? Got you lying between your teeth. What's with the Bilderberg? I'm burning your effigies. I'm praying a Lucifer. How sickness can you be? While all the time praying you believing in the peace just to keep up appearances within Christianity. Come on. Secret societies, why we gotta stand for the new world proprieties, the evidence is clear.